Right now you're looking at two gaming monitors side by side. Can you tell which one's on? You can probably tell that the display on the left is on because it's not completely black. There's a little bit of light shining through the LCD screen, even though the monitor is showing a plain black image. It's a limitation of the backlight in this display. But what if I told you that the monitor on the right is also on? Not as obvious, right? That's because its backlight uses mini LEDs as opposed to conventional LEDs. But there's a lot more to mini LED technology than just tricking people into thinking your monitor's off. It improves nearly all aspects of image quality, including brightness, color accuracy, contrast, dynamic range, and detail. That's why I'm pretty excited to check out Samsung's new Odyssey Neo G8 for 2022, the world's first 4K 240Hz VA panel with a one millisecond response time, featuring quantum matrix technology and mini LED backlighting. But before I show you guys a truly insane gameplay demo with this thing, what's the difference between conventional LEDs and mini LEDs? As the name suggests, mini LEDs are much smaller at just 0.2 millimeters or less. This lets manufacturers cram a lot more of them behind an LCD panel, allowing for more dimming zones. There's about 1200 dimming zones on the Odyssey Neo G8, which are finally controlled by Samsung's quantum matrix technology. Together, these two technologies help the display achieve 12-bit black levels, as opposed to 10-bit on comparable panels. The end result is that black levels can be displayed with much more granularity for truer, deeper blacks and better contrast. This also helps facilitate a peak brightness of 2000 nits, expanding the dynamic range to create an enriched HDR experience for wider brightness, low and high tone detail, and richer color. All of this sounds great, but how does it translate to real world applications? Let's go back to our side-by-side -side monitors. Again, on the right is the Odyssey Neo G8, and on the left is my LG Ultra Gear display that I've been using every day for the last year or so. This is not a cheap monitor by any stretch. It's a 4K, 144Hz IPS panel, and I've been pretty happy with it. Until now. In the Resident Evil 2 remake, you can see a huge difference in image quality between the two monitors. The Neo G8 looks notably more captivating with its inky black levels, high contrast, and rich color, while my LG panel appears washed out and dull by comparison. Notice how much brighter the light in the top right corner is on the G8. It almost makes you want to squint your eyes, and you can feel its intensity bouncing off the stairwell. The shadows are darker and more dramatic, making it look more eerie than it does on the LG. On the left wall, you can clearly see more detail on the G8, and it's pretty obvious how much better the display handles color. Everything from the sewer water to the character's outfit to the shotgun on his back are displayed with accurate color expression and tone detail. This way you can actually experience the game in the way the developer intended it to look. In this rather gruesome scene, the Neo G8 produces a richer and wider color spectrum on our hero's entire uniform and the light reflecting off of his helmet looks a lot more intense. The blood spewing from the zombie appears more vibrant and juicy, and her skin goes from a dull gray to shades of green and purple that really bring her to life, ironically. Now here's a scene from Control. Ignoring any shades of black or white, the only colors I really see on the LG panel are red, obviously, and a bit of green on Jesse's jacket. But when we switch over to the G8, the room is filled with varying shades of red, pink, and orange, with plenty of green and yellow at the bottom of the tower. There's a tremendous amount of information here that standard LEDs just can't produce. Also notice that the jacket doesn't just pop with more color now, but you can see finer details in the stitching and shadows as well. How many lines can you count on this wall? Kind of hard, right? With better black level gradation and color expression, seeing details like these are made possible with mini LED and quantum matrix tech. In this shot, if we go back to the LG monitor, it's hard to see much detail on the far left of the image. It's more or less a black abyss. The G8 displays a lot more information, letting us make out a tall shelf with a wooden cabinet sporting a large metallic handle. Here we can also see the pattern on the floor extend much further into that dark corner of the room. If there was an enemy sneaking up on us from this direction, you can probably guess on which monitor we'd spot him first. On a quick side note, the benefits mini LEDs bring to gaming also apply to streamed content. For TV shows and movies, colors pop on screen to create true-to-life images, and darker scenes are especially more mesmeric and riveting. 
In fact, most standard LED backlights perform so poorly in these scenarios that I usually have to turn on enough ambient lights to hide the awful black levels and keep them from being a major distraction. Now circling back to picture blooming for a sec, I did do a bloom comparison between the two monitors and found the Neo G8 to have significantly less haloing than the LG display. In this simple test where we have a notepad window open on a black background, you can easily see how much the dimming zones of each monitor bleed into the darkness. While the Neo G8 can't compete with the self-emitting pixels of an OLED display, it does do a far better job than the LG panel at blocking out unwanted backlighting. And I would even say that the black levels on the G8 are much closer to an OLED than they are to an LED LCD panel. Without a doubt, the quantum matrix in mini LED tech is the biggest draw of this display, but it's also pretty loaded elsewhere. On top of a 4K resolution of 3840 by 2160, it runs at a blazing fast 240 hertz refresh rate. To be honest, I haven't spent much time gaming with monitors this fast, and I can definitely tell a big difference in speed and smoothness between this and my 144 hz LG display. The best way I can describe 240 Hz is that everything you move on screen feels like it's been lubed. It just makes all of your movements feel agile and lightning quick, almost creating a slippery effect that's incredibly satisfying, but really has to be experienced to understand and appreciate fully. Equally fast is a one millisecond response time that eliminates any perceivable ghosting to my eyes, and a super low input lag of two milliseconds. Input lag is the time between a user input, like a mouse click or a keystroke, and when that action is displayed on screen. Two milliseconds is a very small delay, and this low latency can go a long way in offering a competitive advantage in fast-paced games. It's not too surprising that a high-end panel with these specs also features variable refresh rate technology with FreeSync Premium Pro, and this fully supports low frame rate compensation, or LFC, and HDR content with low latency. Another huge perk is the elimination of any tearing or stuttering for buttery smooth gameplay. The display itself is 32 inches measured diagonally, and it's highly functional with a great deal of thought put in. Samsung's opted for a super anti-glare, anti-reflection film, resulting in a matte screen that heavily reduces glare and reflections for clear viewing in a wide variety of lighting situations. It's a ton better than my LG panel. Also, I actually love the 1000R curve a lot more than I thought I would, because in the past, I've never really been a fan of curved 16x9 panels, but now I realize that's just because all the ones that I tried were too small. At 32 inches, the Neo G8 is large enough to envelop my vision for the curve to be justified, while keeping all the pixels equidistant from my eyes to produce uniform viewing angles. You just wanna make sure that you have room for this thing on your desk because you might be surprised how much larger a 32 inch panel is than a typical 27 inch display. Fortunately, the panel is VESA compliant, so you can strap it to a wall to save room while cleaning up the appearance. If wall mounting isn't your thing though, the white stand looks pretty cool and features height, swivel, and tilt adjustment for improved ergonomics. Behind the panel is an RGB ring with Samsung's core lighting and core sync feature, which changes the lighting to match the colors of the game on screen. It can be enabled for greater immersion and bling factor, or you can turn it off completely if you prefer a more traditional experience. Now here's an interesting one. Within the OSD, there's an option to enable ultra-wide game view. This changes the native 16 by 9 aspect ratio to 21 by 9 offering a wider view and letting you see more of your surroundings when playing games. You'll have to be okay with a few compromises though. Forcing 21 by 9 on a 16 by 9 display means you'll have black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. I don't mind this so much because the black bars here are actually black rather than a dimly lit gray caused by backlight bleed of an LED LCD panel. The Neo G8 also has the ability to automatically switch sources when you power on a connected device, like a console for example. So rather than having to use the OSD to change inputs every time, which is a hassle, the device is detected when you power it on and it gets pushed to the screen automatically for your convenience. Summing things up here, I actually really like this display. It's definitely not going to be cheap, but that's because its image quality outperforms nearly every other gaming monitor on the market right now, earning it a Best of Innovation award at CES this year, fun fact. At the same time, I hate this display because now I wanna buy two more of them to replace the three LG panels in my main setup. Why, oh why, did I ever fall in love with such an expensive hobby? I should have gotten into buttons or something. But if any of you guys have ever gamed on a mini LED monitor before, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And if you think the lofty price tag that's usually associated with them is worth it over conventional LED panels. But that's all I got for now, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like on it before you go get subscribed for more tech content on the way. And I'll see y'all in the next video.